I mean, it's was it difficult for Pete to? I mean, I know he's joked about that the his dad in the past, and I know that's the way he deals with it. Was it was that a, a difficult film for for him to be a part of? Yes, I, well, from what I'm gathering from his interviews, he didn't let on about it, and I I didn't talk to him about it. Like I tr- I try to do the German Irish thing, like oh that's emotionally painful. Let's bury it and talk about something else. I would be the worst therapist ever. <laughs> um, well, we don't want to talk about that, do we? Let's move on. It's a nice sunny day, isn't it? Um, I. Uh, I, I do remember one of the days when we were first getting together and we were meeting the firefighters, we went to the, the, the firehouse that Pete's dad worked at. Right. And the one that he last worked at. And uh, I know Pete remembered being there as a kid. And I got to tell you, one of the guys, John Sorrentino, who was working at the firehouse at the time and fortunately was off the day, off that day on 9-11. So or he would have suffered the same fate. Um, he told us the whole story. We went downstairs and he showed us all the 9-11 photos and all the stuff. And like, I mean, dude, it was like, it was really heavy. And I, I was sitting there going like, man, I don't know if I'll be able to do this justice. What have I got myself into? And I, when we went to leave, you know, Pete did make a comment, you know, in a joking way of like, okay, great. And now I'm going to go home and cry. Like did it like a comedian. <laughs> yeah. And I was kind of like, oh, yeah, hey, like, I, I, I kind of uh, feel like I dropped the ball, to be honest with you, as a friend. I, I didn't know how to handle that. And no. um, so, but I, I, I was happy when I, I did an interview with him, Pete and Judd, and he was saying how he feels with this movie, he can, he can put this stuff behind him. Yeah. And kind of have, like, his, his own identity, I think, um, w- with, like, now he's Pete Davidson, the man, as opposed to, for, for a, you know, a long time in any sort of public eye, I think he was the son of a firefighter that died on 9-11. Yeah. And, and I also think that people, for whatever reason, want to constantly bring it up. Like, uh, he, he did tell me that, that people come up to him all, hey, I knew your dad, he was a great guy, blah, blah, blah. And it's just like, so it's you just keep picking at the wound, you know yeah. what I mean? It's just like, you know what happened? It's like if he wants, I, I just look at it like I just treated it like if he wanted to bring it up and talk about it, I would. Yeah. But if he didn't, I wasn't going to bring it up. Why would? Because why would you do that to somebody? Sure. No, that's I good. wouldn't do that if somebody's dog died. <laughs> so do you still miss your dog? Do you find yourself <laughs> excited to go for a walk and then look at that leash and realize there's nothing to connect it to? Like, why would I do that to somebody? <laughs> but people. They like to do that. I don't know why they do that. <laughs> now, my wife watches a lot of shows where there's people getting interviewed, crying about the most painful moments in their life. And I always tease her about it. And it's just like, oh, great. So, like, their children dying is now your entertainment for the evening? <laughs> like, how do I kill these? <laughs> like, I remember people were asking me that when that Michael Jackson documentary came out. Hey, did you see the Michael Jackson documentary? <laughs> so I was like, no. Why would I want to watch that? Like, what, what am I going to do for tonight's entertainment? Oh, I'll smoke a joint and watch, uh, I'll watch pedophilia testimony. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen every episode of The Office. I need something else to entertain me. I feel like about that with Chernobyl. Everyone's going on about how great this Chernobyl drama is. And I don't want to watch a film about people being radioactively destroyed by a... We know what happened. Yeah, and, and having deformed babies and just looking at that level of pain when there's absolutely nothing. Oh, you can be informed. <laughs> and, and then what? I'm going to make a sign, and then the, the super wealthy 1% would be like, oh, look at that bald redhead with this sign. <laughs> Bloodshed, people. Bloodshed affects change. Everything <laughs> I, else, I don't know. <laughs> or, or economics. you got to hit them economically. Yeah. There you go. Anyways, Before the King I of Staten it, Island. It, 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 I'm guessing I was trying to work out what Staten Island is in in terms in a UK term. I think Staten Island is probably like Croydon. Do you know Croydon? It's near to London. Oh, do I know Croydon? I go way back. <laughs> I used to summer there. It's sort I've of never like, heard of it. Uh, Staten Island. I'm guessing from the film. I don't know much about Staten Island, but it's kind of near New York, but n- not not the 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 tra- trashier place. Of, or near New York, I think. Or that's how it's viewed, I would say. 
Well, let me ask you this. Yeah. Is it, it's right outside of London? Yeah, Croydon's just outside of London. Okay, so then all those people that move to London, okay, yeah. and feel that they're a success simply because they left their hometown sure. and they walk past Big Ben, <laughs> do they all look down on those people? Um, yeah, I, I don't think anyone from Croydon gets out of Croydon, unfortunately, but yeah, they would do if they did that. Oh, they do, yeah. <laughs> in, in New York, in Manhattan... Anybody from an outer borough is, is was considered uh, the bridge and tunnel crowd. Right. <laughs> it's just a super elitist, like, you know, how did you get this to the, at some point, you were either in a tunnel, you went over a bridge yeah. to get to this exclusive island. Yeah. It's stupid. Well, in London, it's if you're not if you're not on the tube network, basically, which is most of South London, but is not on the tube network, and Croydon very much is not on the tube network. So, yeah, I think it's the, oh, the so king of South Croydon. London is- South London is where everybody thinks the animals live. <laughs> yeah. Is that it? Yeah, yeah. So what was what, what was West End? I remember that song when I was a kid. Ah, the West End girls and West End I mean, guys. The West End. He said something in. Something, something. The West, West End, End is the uh, posh part of central London. It's where all the theatres are. It's where the Leicester Square Theatre, where I would be interviewing you if you were over uh, in, the, in London. That's the first place I played in London. Is it? Yeah, yeah. So it's the, that's, I mean, that's sort of off West End, but there's, there's, it's that area, it's Leicester Square and all that sort of area, Shaftesbury Avenue. It's, it's a very, it's, it's supposedly swanky, but, uh, you know, it's, it's still London. You um, know what it is, Richard? You're too down to earth to even notice. You know what I mean? You're a people person. <laughs> I, so, I am. I like it. It's supposedly posh. <laughs> you know it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but you know, Leicester Square sounds exciting, doesn't it? But it's 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 just some cinemas and a, a sort of slight, well, slightly dodgy statue. I was very excited to yeah. be there. London yeah. is a big deal for Americans, yeah, of course, of course. Well, and you know, but America's a big deal for us. Um, so, the King of Staten well, Island, certain, you- city, certain cities. I, this is why I can tell, like, when our economy is not doing well, is when I hear a British accent and I'm on my way to like Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> Where it's just like, oh, I, you know, the pound or whatever denomination you have over there is so strong over here. Let's visit states nobody in England gives a fuck about. 